Hello, Chris Long with Connected Correctly. Today we are out in Fayetteville doing a evaluation and troubleshooting of a trailer uh, for a client of mine who had a left rear hub failure back in July. Um, when we came out to this trailer and did the initial hub replacement, it was a simple hub failure. Uh, whether that was caused by a faulty outer bearing, um, the uh, get some lights for me here, Caleb. Whether that was caused by a faulty outer bearing or maybe the castle nut uh, retaining device, whether that was a cotter pin or whatever that came loose or did whatever. When I t the first shell out, there was no evidence of what went wrong because it was all just a bunch of fragments in the in the hub. The spindle at that time when we got here was in fine shape. There wasn't anything wrong with it other than being scarred up a little bit. I emery clothed down. Uh, some of the marred surface of the outer spindle, uh, the inner the inner journal was fine. Um, it, it miked out within within uh, spindle specs. So we said, hey, let's just put a new hub and drum assembly on it. Well, I also explained to the customer that his left rear would all be new, new bearings, new races, new hub. Um, if he wanted the trailer to be on the same service schedule, it would only make sense to replace the other three hubs and drums so that they're all on the same. Uh, maintenance schedule as far as being new so he agreed to that and we put all new hubs and drums on the trailer we took all the wheels and tires off all the existing hubs and drums off all the brakes looked fine uh, shoes were at optimal thickness they were not overly worn hub faces magnets all the braking uh, components on both sides of the trailer were were very in very good shape practically new so we cleaned all the brakes up, put brand new uh, hubs and drums and bearings and everything on it, got the new brakes, well, the old brakes ad adjusted out to the new drums using a, the star adjuster tool, got the brakes properly set. We did a complete test of the trailer by plugging their trailer plug into our Smart Mutt trailer uh, tester, which is not your average uh, trailer tester. It will identify short circuits, crossed circuits, overloads, reverse polarity. It's, it tells you everything that you need to know about testing trailer electronics. The trailer checked out just fine at the end of our repair and we physically and mathematically using the ohm or the uh, voltage meter on the smart mutt to test the brakes. Uh, we were drawing the, the correct amount of, uh, I'm sorry, amperage, not voltage. We were drawing the correct amount of amperage uh, for all brakes to be engaged and we physically turned the wheels and tires while the trailer was still up on jack stands and the brakes engaged. So we knew the brakes were working, all the lights seemed to be working. I think there were a couple lights that were like blown out as far as bulbs and stuff, but that's not what they hired me to come and repair. So basically everything worked out good. This broken wire that you see in my hand right here that someone has cut and taped off with duct tape and rear wire was not there that day. There was only this and this wire from the plug to there was was uniform all right so now that brings us to where we're at today he calls me and says i shelled out another another hub and drum you just did that for me back in july it's not even been two full months actually it has been two full months two and a half months it's been two and a half months because this is middle of october now um it's been two and a half months and i shelled out the same drum and you did something wrong and he was upset at me on the phone and I'm like let's hang on a minute let's do some investigation here to find out what went wrong because I'm not saying that I'm not capable of mis making mistakes but it's pretty rare for me to make a mistake so um, in good faith I got out here as quick as I could to look this thing over the first thing that caught my attention when I got here is look at this hub look at this drum see that chalky white lights over here Caleb See that chalky white? That is from where this drum has become so hot that it's literally turned colors. The same way you take a blowtorch to cast iron and just make it cherry red. When you let up on it, it it's going to be chalky white like that. That's what's happened. These brakes became engaged. The brakes to the inside of this hub is purple. You can see the metal there being purple um, from becoming so hot on the inside. The inside drum surface has been extremely hot. The outer side of the surface chalked out on us. And what's happened is those brake shoes inside this drum were in, engaged while they're driving down the highway. 
in an immense amount of friction and heat just boiled and burned all the grease out of the hub and that's the reason why we had bearing failure it burned all the grease out and then we had metal to metal contact and of course we have everything shelled out again more evidence of heat is the discoloration of the metal of the castle nut uh, the bearing races are purple purple and blue um, it got very 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 hot when you look inside here shine down here caleb the wires that feed the electric brake magnet are the insulation is burned to a crisp off of those off of those wires that is not from the electric brake wires being too hot that burn the 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 insulation off the wire that's the actual heat buildup inside the hub that actually fried the wire coatings the 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 insulation to a crisp you can see me just it just is charring apart like ash on those wires it did melt the plastic grommet that goes in the back back backing plate shine under here caleb and then under here we have where the wire goes up into the drum it's right there let's see if i can see it where's my camera at? guys bear with me okay there those wires there going up into the drum right there they are not burned they're not burned the insulation's not burned off of them if it was an electrically induced fire then the, the wires the wire coatings and stuff here would be melted and, and melted together the heat which was only on the forward side or the outside side of this brake backing plate is what melted all the insulation off those wires so we know that we had a friction induced a brake engagement induced fire basically or buildup of heat that burned all those electrical cables boiled all the grease out of the hub and caused the bearing failure so the question is what caused that hub or those brakes to come on hot first thing i want to do is test the trailer okay so i plug the the plug into my test box hold film me doing this caleb i plug can you see what i'm doing mm -hmm. i plug it and i first thing i noticed it was really really tight and stiff which shouldn't be that way and i'll show you why it is that way in just a minute okay i'll come over here i'm gonna turn our test box on uh our internal battery and it's going to cycle through all the circuits to tell us what's wrong and the first thing it's going to tell us is a hey, ground integrity you have no ground and as a result everything is open everything's open circuits well okay let's take the plug apart and find out film this i'll see if it'll do the same thing it did a while ago when i took a hold of this and pulled it out the sleeve right there the sleeve came off the plug same thing happened earlier and the plug body stayed in the thing i'm like what in the world's going on so i'm going to wiggle this out okay now you'll notice the orientation that i have here can you see the wire colors get close if you need to notice that top left is red top side is or left side is green right side is yellow top right is black and bottom left is open bottom right is op is open the reason why i mean orient that back the way it was right there guys right there's the way it was yellow is left turn signal green is right turn signal green is on the left post right is on or let yellow is on the right post these are backwards this is supposed to be your tail light circuit here where my thumb is at that's supposed to be a brown wire it's red this particular trailer is using red for electric brakes what's happened is this plug is upside down that's the way it's supposed to be in the plug with brown on the top left yellow on the left and and ground down here on the bottom right post or bottom left post i'm sorry when you turn this around backwards there is nothing on the bottom that's why it's showing open ground it's not showing that there's a ground so this is the way that the plug was oriented right there now when i take this out if you can see this caleb see that little mark there at the end of my finger that's where the plug shine that in the light that's where the plug set screw has been screwed down tight against the plug body that's not supposed to set down there if i flip this plug around 
180 degrees, notice the hole. This screw right here in the plug is supposed to set down. Can you see the, the actual indention there of the plug? Yeah. Okay. That, you can shine the light on if you need to, like yeah. that. That screw goes down inside that plug and it's designed to set down in that hole so that the plug guts stay secured to the plug body, just like that. But someone had this thing flipped around like this. And the reason why the plug is, is fitting, the, fitting the socket on my tester tight is notice here on the bottom of the plug, you've got this uh, groove right there. That's for this groove in the bottom of the plug. That groove lines up with that slot and that's what allows that to go in easily. When you, when you spin it around 180 degrees, now what you're asking the plug to do is that that little notch in there is on the outside edge of that plug surface and now it's making it oval shaped. See the, the gap in the bottom right there? I don't know if you can see that. That gap in the bottom of the plug in here is what's causing that to be more oval shaped than round and that's why it's going into my, my, my test box very stiff. Okay, so what that means is they have actually hooked They've reversed that around, they've plugged it in here, and as soon as they kick on the tail lights on their truck, the tail light post, which is the top left pin circuit inside this plug body comes hot, well that's lining up with the electric brake circuit on the trailer and it's causing the trailer brakes to come on hot on the trailer. Somebody knew they were having issues with it because they cut this wire. This red wire, which is what's hooked up to the electric brake post inside the pin, has been cut. Someone's put a piece of red tape around one end, piece of uh, duct tape on the other. Whether they cut that before the hub failure or after is unknown, but I guarantee you that's what caused this back hub to get hot is because at nighttime running, that tail light circuit was hot, caused that to get completely hot enough that it burned all the grease out of the hub, metal to metal contact, hub shells, you're right back where you were to begin with. It's just a fluke that it happened to be the same hub and drum location as before. My guess is that all three, the other three remaining hubs have also become hot, maybe not to the point of, of bearing failure, but you'll notice this wheel and tire, all that grease that's all over that wheel, that tells me that that grease inside that hub became liquefied and is actually trying to seep out between the hub uh, body and the cap and it's spraying out on the, on the wheel as the wheel turns down the highway. So I'd be willing to bet that we may not have hub failures on the other three, but we definitely have heat damaged components all the way around because of that simple mistake. Terrible, terrible mistake to make uh, because it's something as simple as getting the plug body upside down, but as you can tell, that can cause hundreds of dollars of damage and it's unfortunate but that is definitely what has happened and another reason why i tell folks when you have issues like this it's impossible to know what's going on all over the telephone until we get out to a place do some investigating find out what's going on and get to the bottom of why things did what they did don't always be so quick to jump on your technician uh, we're not out here doing sloppy work or at least most of us aren't and we're, we're trying to do things with excellence. Very, very rarely, I can count on one hand the amount of times that I've made a mistake that I had to go back and fix because I'm very passionate about making sure we do a good job. So when people call me in a situation like this and get all upset and angry, be careful until we look at it because you, <laughs> you may end up not looking too good at the end of the day because this is something that we did not do. Um, I'm sure now that the owner of this trailer We'll be asking his employees or the people who use the trailer about why they went into the plug, what changes were made. Uh, did this happen at night, uh, which I would assume that it did, um, and try to get to the bottom of what's going on. But anyways, wanted to point all that out. I know it was a lengthy video, but I want to show you how we actually went through the processes to, de to, to determine what was wrong with it. And now 
how to move forward with the customer. I'm also going to shoot a second video on this trailer um, that is going to outline why I think that this trailer has probably got some issues outside of this because these are not the right axles for this trailer. Um, and this trailer is not very old. It's a 2016 model. Today's date is October, what is today, the 18th? Uh, today's October the 18th um, of 2017. So this trailer is not quite two years old. And this next video that I'm gonna show you is why I think this thing is basically a lemon. Because uh, these aren't the, the axles, the, pro the proper axles that are supposed to be on this trailer. All right guys, that's it. I'll do the next one later. Thanks for your time and attention.